Keep in mind that what you are seeing are all components of a prototype. Many things will change, especially in terms of readability, icons and colors. Tamari lasts three seasons, which are divided into five rounds each. There is also a season zero, which let's say it's part of the setup. In this season zero, action cards are given to the players and the draft takes place. The chosen cards will make up the player's first hand, while the leftover will determine the turn order for placing the first farmer on the board. The number at the top helps determine who will act first. The lower the number, the sooner you act. The farmers are placed in these spaces that represent the production fields, paying attention to the spaces available based on the number of players. The card used to determine the turn order is then removed from the game. Each round is divided into five phases, starting from the first, which is the weather phase. In this phase, one of these tiles is revealed and a number of marbles, determined by the season and the tile, are delicately thrown into the pyramid. These will slide into the canals and will be positioned randomly. If there are five or more marbles of the same color visible in a canal, remove the lowest one of that color until there are fewer than five. Silt marbles are placed in these spaces to indicate how many resources will be produced. Then, if a marble of water and a marble of sun touch each other, remove them both. This could cause cascading removals. If more silt marbles become visible, place them here if there is room or in the reserve. In the second phase, players choose a card from their hand that will determine the actions they could take and the turn order, placing it face down in the leftmost free space on their board. Each card can have a minimum of two actions, up to three in the case of the special ones, however they are divided into a top group and a bottom group. Usually a player can only carry out the actions of one group, but if the symbol on the card matches the one on the board or on the previous card, he can carry out all of them from top to bottom and from left to right. Additionally, the cards have a value at the top that will determine the turn order for a current round and possibly ways to interact with the weather marbles. In the third phase, the players simultaneously decide whether to reveal the card or keep it face down. This involves two important details. First of all, face down cards always have the number one and have all the symbols on the right side. Then they allow you to carry out any action by spending one Deben for each face down card on your board. At this point, the turn order is determined, where the lower value indicates acting first in the turn. If more than one player has left the card face down, the value on the back will determine turn order. Then we move on to the fourth phase in which the actions takes place. On your turn, first of all, you can take advantage of the possibility that some cards give you to interact with the marbles by removing those indicated from the canals. Or maybe you could get some silt that you will keep on your board. At this point, carry out the actions, after which you will have to choose a card from the display to take in your hand. If there is a resource, take that too. Finally, check that you do not have more than four resources of each type, otherwise you will have to discard them. On your turn, you can also discard and apply the effect of any number of these cards if you have them, activate permanent building effects and carry out these three actions that you find here on your board. Now, let's look at the actions. The farmer action allows you to place one of your available workers in one of the fields and possibly move the others where you think they are more useful. You cannot have more than one farmer in each field. You can take workers from your supply, from other spaces on the board except from the trucks and from your board. The harvest action allows you to take resources from those fields that are fertile. To determine if a field is fertile, you must look at these icons, which refer to each field and determine the quantity and type of marbles that they can contain. For example, in this field, to be fertile, there can be from 0 to 3 yellow or 0 blue marbles. If there were even just 1 blue or 4 yellow marbles, the field would no longer be fertile. Or these ones, that can hold up to 2 marbles of any color or 1 of any color. So each of your farmers in a fertile field produces a number of resources determined by the number of silt marbles. Once you got the resources, remove a silt marble from each river adjacent to a field you produce from. 
The merchant action allows you to trade and obtain resources from the market. If you do not have a merchant in the market, place it in one of the free spaces, otherwise, if it is already there, you can move him to a free space. Then choose whether to trade or collect. If you trade, you have to place a resource from your supply into the market and get the two resources adjacent to your merchant taken from the supply. Then the other players who have a merchant adjacent to a stall from which you obtain resources can take the same resource from the supply. If you collect, you may take all resources from the market and all other players who have a merchant in play get one resource of their choice from the supply. The builder action allows you to obtain building cards. If you don't have a builder along this track, you must take it from your supply or the game board and place it on the first space. Remember that you cannot take them from here. If you already have a builder, move it one space forward on the track. Then purchase a building on your current level or lower by paying the cost shown on the card. You can also get a card of a higher level, but you will have to pay as many papyrus as there are levels to reach it. Each card is different, they can give you immediate benefits, permanent abilities and a chance to gain victory points. They all have a symbol that will give you victory points at the end of the game through set collection. Once you get a card, slide the other cards on the game board down and reveal a new one. The priest action allows you to get on one of these tracks of your choice. If you don't have a priest on that track, take a worker from your supply or the game board and start from the bottom space that counts as the first step. You can move a priest from 1 to 4 spaces, paying 1 to 4 different resources. Then you get all the bonuses of the space that you passed and the one where you stopped. If there is an opponent's priest in the space where you want to stop, move him one space forward and that player gets the bonus indicated in that space. If you pass through spaces where there is another priest, nothing happens. Remember that a priest can never be removed from these tracks. Here you can get a multitude of bonuses including victory points, debon, unlock workers from your board and getting the given bonus, and among other things get these improved action cards which give you the possibility to do more actions but have a very high numerical value so you will most likely act last. The Sphinx action, by paying a fruit, allows you to place one of your sphinxes from your board on one of these available tiles. Then activate all your sphinxes in the order you want. If you already have all the sphinxes in play, pay the fruit and activate them. These will remain here for the rest of the game. The decorator action allows you to activate any sphinx, whether it's yours, of another player or it's free, without paying the fruit. The last action is the offering to the pharaoh, that allows you to place from 1 to 4 different resources behind your screen and gain one more victory point than the number of resources placed. These resources will give you victory points at the end of the season if you are in the majority compared to the other players. When all players have played a card, the run ends, place the indicated resources on the cards remaining in the display, reveal a number of cards based on the number of players, and continue with phase 1 of the next round. However, if the players have played their fourth card, the season ends. At the end of the season, the player with the highest priest in this track draws as many priest cards as all the priests in play. That player looks at them, chooses one, and then passes them to the player immediately below on that track, who will choose one card and pass the others to the next player, always going from top to bottom and from the left temple to the right temple. These cards can be used during your turn for the given action or kept until the end of the game to gain victory points. Then each player checks whether the symbol on the last card played matches the one on their player boards. In that case, that player gets two points. Then victory points are gained based on the condition of all the building cards that give points. At this point, the players reveal the resources placed behind their screen and the majorities are awarded. Each resource is evaluated individually and the player who has the most gets two points. In case of a tie, one point each. Whoever wins or draws a majority must discard those resources. The others are placed back behind the screen. Cards played by the players, cards in the display and the deck are removed from the game. Any resources of these cards are placed into the market. If this is the end of the first or second season, the weather tiles are shuffled, the last building card is removed and after sliding them down another one is revealed, then take the deck for the next season and reveal cards equal to the number of players plus two. Continue with phase one of the new season. However, if it is the end of the third season, 
Carry out the final scoring. Check the resource majorities behind the screens exactly as seen before. Then who is left with the most resources behind the screen gets two points. Finally, discard these resources. You get a certain number of points for buildings with a different symbol according to the scheme. You can do more than one set. Priest cards that have not been used during the game earn the indicated victory points. Players then reveal the cards they have in their hand and check which symbol is the most recurring, obtaining a number of points equal to the number of those symbols. You gain one victory point for every three resources, Deben and Silt left, and whoever has the most points wins the game, and in case of a tie, whoever has the highest value card in their hand.